Hello, this is Anshu. I'm going to run through the building tools for Landmark very quickly. You start with the Add, Delete, and Heal tools. The Add tool is used to add voxels to the world. The Delete tool is used to delete voxels from the world. And the Heal tool is used to heal the world back to what it was before you did anything to it. When using any of the tools that let you place as a cube, you can use the mouse wheel to increase or decrease the size of the cube that you're placing. So, and there are two cube scales that you can choose from. One of the scales it is one, two, three, and four, voxel sized. Or if you press the N key on the keyboard, it'll switch to the other scaling mode, which lets you place in one, three, six, or 12 voxel sized cubes. You can also change to a sphere placement mode by pressing the C key on the keyboard, and then you can use the mouse wheel to scale the size of that placement sphere, just like you scale the cube. However, this does not have an alternate scale mode like the cube does. To change uh, modes in sphere, there's a shift tab shortcut to change to the distance that the sphere is from the surface. You roll the mouse wheel to change the depth of the sphere from the surface that you currently are mousing over. You can select the material that you're placing into the world using the material selection screen on the left side over here, this little toolbar. This is the material selection window. Let's you, uh, you can just mouse over different icons to show what materials you can select to build with. There's also a primitive shapes area that lets you place simple shapes into the world. You can also use the Alt key to select a material that the mouse is currently over. If I hold Alt, notice how the cursor selection changed. If I click here, notice that it changes the material to what I click on. So if I hold Alt and click, note the material changes. Alt, click. For any of the tools that let you scale its size using the mouse wheel in uh, cube mode, you can press the G key on the keyboard to go into a grid mode for the tool, which snaps to a grid that is built into the game world. Uh, this can be used on any of these uh, cube placement mode tools, including the selection tool. Also, you can enter a tweak mode with any of the tools. That is done by holding the shift key and clicking, and it will bring up this little interface that lets you move or rotate or scale uh, the tool that you're currently using anywhere in the world before you actually apply it. To undo something that you just did, you press Control Z. You can redo it by pressing Control Y. When using the Heal tool, you can hold the J key on the keyboard if you're not in grid mode, and it will pull the selection up to the surface of the voxel that you are currently mousing over. Notice how the cube is above because I am holding J on the keyboard. If I let go of J, it drops into the surface of the voxel I have cursor over. When you're using the Add tool, you can temporarily switch to the Delete tool by pressing and holding the Control key on the keyboard. It'll switch to Delete. So you can delete while you have the Add tool selected just by holding Control. For the Selection tool, you can select a region of voxels by clicking and holding the mouse on the starting voxel and then letting go of the mouse on the ending voxel. To adjust the sides of the selection area, you can mouse over one of the sides and notice how it highlights and you click and drag and it will move that side. There's also the corner the corners which you can click and hold to resize locked into the plane that that corner is on. So if I click this upper corner, it'll lock into that top plane. If I click this face corner, it'll lock into this plane for adjustment. 
Also, I can shift the entire selection box by holding the shift key down, which presents this little gizmo. I can click and drag on the arrows while holding the shift key to move the entire selection. Also, I can apply any of the tools to a selection, like the Add tool, Delete tool, Smooth tool, the Paint tool, Fill tool. Also, when you're using the Selection tool and you want to adjust the face that is on the opposite side of the selection from where you are at, you can hold down the control key to highlight that opposite side. So notice how when I press control it highlights this other side of the cube. So I can click and drag that opposite side. And this works no matter what angle you're looking through. So I can select this side by holding control, select this opposite side. If I let go of control it of course selects the closest side. One of the most powerful features in the game is the copy and paste ability. If I use the selection tool to click and drag to select a specific object or region of voxels, I can use Control C to copy it or Control X to cut it. And then if I want to place that down in the world, I use Control V. And while you're placing, you can Use Shift Tab to change modes. You can go into a rotation mode and go into a translation mode. And note that there are you're locked into a specific axis when you're placing. Right now I'm locked in vertically. If I press Tab, it locks into this axis, tab again, this axis. And I'm scrolling the wheel on the mouse to do this movement. So as you tab through, it'll change axes. Same thing for rotation mode. I just hit shift tab. I'm in rotation mode. I can rotate. Press tab again to change the axis I'm rotating on. And I'm scrolling the wheel to rotate the placement. Then of course, click to place it. Now, before... There's also an option to hold the shift key and enter a tweak mode when you're placing. You hold shift and click, it goes into this placement mode, which allows you to freely move your camera so the placement is no longer linked to the mouse. You can move around and look, look at your object, make sure you're aligned with whatever you want to align with in the world. You can also switch to rotation, which of course it only rotates 90 degrees as it is placing voxels. There's also an option to paste air or not paste air. When you paste air, it will fill in the gaps around, or any air spots in the selection will fill in with air. But notice if I drag this into post here, and I place it with air, notice how it place these voxels of air here instead of letting this wood stay. So if I do this again, hold shift and click. Let's move that back down. And I unselect paste air. Notice the difference. Just place this in. Did not paste the air with it, so it allowed this wood to continue into that gap. Another powerful part of the pasting feature is when you paste something, you can mirror it along the axis that's currently selected. Notice how the arrows are currently vertical. If, if I press V on the keyboard, it will flip the uh, pasted region vertically. If I press Tab, I, I'm now mirroring on that axis. So whatever axis I have selected, I'm mirroring on that axis. Templating is a very powerful part of the game also. If you want to save a certain set of voxels or props as a template, you use the selection tool to select it. Then over in your material selection screen at the bottom here, 
notice the little house shape. This is your template uh, area. You can hit create new once you've selected what you want a template, and then enter a name for that template. Create, and it will save that into your template list. Then if you want to place that back into the world, go to your templates, find what you saved, hit place, place that right into the world. The Smooth tool smooths voxels into each other. For example, if you're trying to make a terrain that looks natural, you can place voxels with the Add tool and then use the Smooth tool to smooth them into the existing terrain so they look a little more natural. The Smooth tools also used to create microvoxels, uh, which you can do. Uh, one method of doing this is to place one voxel using the Add tool and then use the Smooth tool to smooth that single voxel any number of times. And this is done in midair. Then you can use the Select tool to select that voxel and copy it. And then when you paste that voxel into the world, it can be used to create intricate shapes that you couldn't create really in any other way. The Line tool adds voxels in a line between two surfaces of variable size by selecting a starting point and an ending point. Before you select each point, you can change the size of the um, surface that you're attaching to. And this size selection you can change the scale mode using the N key on the keyboard like the other tools. As an example, I could connect this surface with this size to this surface at this size. And we'll fill the voxels between and create a nice straight line between. You can use the tweak mode when you're placing each side of the line tool. So for example, if I want to start here, I can press shift and then click, and then I can move this starting point to wherever I want. It could even be in midair. And then accept that side, and then place the other side. Shift click, and I can move that to anywhere that's accepted by the line tool. The color of the preview for the line tool shows you whether the current position is in alignment in one or two axes. So, For example, when it's yellow like this, it means that this line tool is not aligned in any axis. When it turns green like this, it means you're aligned on one axis. Then if it turns to a solid green or a, a more opaque green, it means you're aligned on two axes. Again, it will still function on any, as long as it's yellow or green, it will still draw the line. It will not draw the line, however, if it is red. And typically it only shows red when you're using the single voxel tool which is very limited at this point. The paint tool changes the painted voxels from one material to another. As you paint a material that has been placed in the world, the material that you're replacing will be put into your inventory, and the material that you're ch changing the voxels to will be removed from your inventory. When painting, you only gain materials that you're replacing if they were put there by a player. <laughs> 